Okay, so today I'm going to discuss a presentation about the keratoconus diagnosis with combined, combined placido and shimflug tomography. So as we know that, uh, first of all, I have no financial disclosure to interest to disclose. And we all know that the corneal imaging has been um, revolu uh, revolutionized by the advent of the new uh, techniques and the new uh, machines. So we basically, for the last 30 years, we have the corneal topography based on the placido based devices, and which basically just study the corneal surface. Later on, the, tomo the, to the tomographers that use it to study the 3D section of the cornea using the shimflug imaging, such as um, the serious CSO and the scanning slit uh, device. So these two techniques have been used to image the coronal surface. So the Chimflug camera is basically a, ca a rotating camera that doing scans for the eye. And the placido disc, on the other hand, is just to reflect like black and white, black and white mirrors over the cornea. So. What happens if we just combine both techniques together? If we just have a single device that have those two techniques, I think that it will have more accurate data. And this is what basically what the CSO series is doing. So, but we had this research questions like, we have, okay, we can, we can have a more uh, accurate data coming from combining both the placido and the Shimflug camera, but what are the cutoff values for the keratoconus diagnosis and how can we detect the early cases? And which one of these data and the indices are more sensitive, which are more specific? So we, d we have done a, a study called the topographic elevation and keratoconus indices for diagnosis of keratoconus by combined placido and Shimflug tomography system, which was published in the European Journal of Ophthalmology in 2021. The purpose of this study is to detect the accuracy of different indices for diagnosis of keratoconus using the, the corneal topography system by Sirius CSO. So we, this was a prospective case control observational study where we are, have two groups. The first group was 115 eyes of keratoconic eyes versus 111 of normal eyes. So we studied both in this following inclusion and exclusion criteria. So we included patients with keratoconus who have been diagnosed by a slit lamp examination and have been shown to have keratoconus by other platforms. And also the normal subjects have been recruited from those who have been seeking refractive surgery. The exclusion criteria where are the patients who had previous trauma or surgery, those would have narrow palpebral fissure because this will like hinder the, a proper scanning, significant corneal scarring and other ectatic corneal conditions such as pellucid margin degeneration and post lasik ectasia or anterior segment pathology on a slit lamp examination. This study was conducted in accordance with the Declaration of Helsinki this, uh, and has been approved by Ethical Committee in Cairo University and informed consent have been obtained from all participants. And statistics have been done through the MedCalc uh, statistical software using the Ampere t-test. So what we basically did in this study, we measured the refractive error uh, of all, all participants we, through the spherical equivalent, did the best corrected visual acuity, thorough slit lamp examination, and have done four reliable scans by the CSO using the same uh, experienced practitioner, and we studied these investigational indices. So this, this platform will enable us to get curvature indices, elevation indices, pachymetric indices, and the keratoconus summary, para, uh, summary parameters. So for the curvature indices, we measured the K1, K2, the simulated K1 and K2, and the K uh, reading at the corneal apex of both anterior and posterior corneal surface, while the elevation indices have been measured in the spheric, aspheric, spherotoric reference surface at different ring sizes of the cornea, like six, seven, eight, and nine millimeters for the anterior posterior corneal surface. So we measure the best fit sphere, the Q value or the corneal sphericity, elevation at the thinnest point, root mean square and root mean square per unit area. Pachymetric indices that were measured, the central corneal thickness, the thinnest location and the XY coordinates, the thickness of the corneal apex, and the keratoconus summary parameters such as curvature asymmetry, vertices which are elevation-based, aberration-based indices, and convergence radius.
So the results is that that all indices were statistically significantly different between both groups. But the the here the the the, the remarkable results is that we found that there are more indices which are more sensitive than others, and some indices more specific than others. So we found that two indices have 100% sensitivity, which were the root mean square and root mean square area at the six millimeter zone of the best fit uh, spherotoric uh, surface, and we found it two. Um, uh, indices with 100% specificity, which are the elevation at the back at the thinnest point at seven millimeter zone of the best fit aspheroidal reference, and the surface, the, the symmetry index of the back corneal surface. So, in conclusion, the theory tests will provide a precise and detailed reproducible corneal analysis of the cornea by combining both chimflug and placido data. There is no single index which is uh, show 100% specificity or sensitivity, and knowing the cut value indices which have been obtained from this study, which was, to our knowledge, this was the first study to have a an, an, uh, cut-off value for all indices for the CSO series uh, up to date, and the elevation indices and critical summary parameters showed that to be the most uh, highest diagnostic ability for the uh, critical Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this very Thank interesting you. presentation. So I'm going to call uh, Dr. Livini from Israel, who is talking about tomographic pseudo-extasia. OK, good morning. So my 